In today's video, we're gonna teach you how to code anything without knowing anything. And to do this, we're gonna turn you from a professional software engineer into a professional proofter engineer. Previously, I made this video about how to debug anything, and these were the steps that we took. However, now we can pretty much substitute almost any step with ask ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT isn't the only place we should ask questions. We should definitely still use Stack Exchange ETH or Piranha, because sometimes ChatGPT tells you something that it completely made up. Having QA forums where we can actually ask experts is still important. To demonstrate this, today we're going to clone a die clone. Is this the best type of stable? coin? No. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move to GPT-4 because in my opinion, 3.5 is kind of garbage. Additionally, if you have GitHub Copilot, that's cool and all, but right now ChatGPT-4 makes GitHub Copilot look like a Neanderthal. So to get started, we can just ask it what we want to do. Can you build us a decentralized, exogenously collateralized stablecoin pegged to $1? Please use Solidity. Boom. And this is where having a lot of domain expertise is still really important as for example, it's telling us to use safe math, but we know that in version 0 0.8 of Solidity, we don't need safe math. And I want to use Foundry for this project. So I'm gonna ask it, hey, can you set this up in the Foundry smart contract framework to which it says Foundry is a smart contract framework developed by Open Zeppelin. And everything it gives out here is just a lot of hallucination and it has no idea what it's talking about. This is because it's cutout date is 2021 and Foundry became more popular last year. So this is where it's still important that no matter what protocol you're working with, you're still gonna wanna have documentation ready so that you can fact check and make sure ChatGPT is actually giving you what you want. We know that to set up a Foundry project, we can just run forge init and we're gonna go ahead and use that. So back in my VS code, I'm just gonna run forge init and get a basic project going. And we're just gonna ignore all this nonsense that it gave us. However, we are gonna take this piece of code up here, simple stable coin, SRC, New file, simple stable coin, paste it in here. Now, obviously we're doing this import at the top and we know that ChatGPT doesn't really know how Foundry works because it's an older library, but I can't be bothered to read any documentation. Let's just copy paste the whole page about working with dependencies. So we're gonna say, hey, Foundry is a newer framework. Here are the docs for working with dependencies. Can you tell me how to import opens up in contracts? And I literally copied the entire dependencies page from Foundry and pasted it into ChatGPT. And just by reading the docs, it gave me some commands to actually import opens up in contracts. Contracts. Let's copy paste it, run it. We get this error. So let's go ahead and add this dash dash no commit flag since Forge actually tells us how to fix it. And boom, by reading the documentation, ChatGPT was able to tell us how to install dependencies. Now let's go ahead and run Forge remappings. It looks like those remappings are indeed in here. And then it wants to refactor our code a little bit. So instead of opens up and slash contracts, it wants us to do this. Okay, how do I compile this now? And since I wanted to shut up because it keeps telling me all this nonsense that I don't care about, I said, hey, just give me the command to which it still gave me a whole bunch of stuff, but it gave me the command which I can copy, paste, forge, compile. Oh, I'm getting an error. Well, I'm a big dummy, so let's just copy this error. It says, whoops, my bad. To fix this issue, follow these steps. Add this, okay. Run forge compile again, okay. Oh, and ta-da, we get a different error. So, same thing, I'm a big dummy. Now I'm getting a new error. How do I fix? And it says, oh, yep, made a mistake. Put this in there instead. Message to sender. Let's compile again. And what do you know? We have a collateral token, which is an ERC-20. So it allows us to take any type of collateral. We have a collateralization ratio here. So if we wanna mint something, it first gets us the amount by multiplying the collateralization radio and then dividing by the precision, transferring the tokens to here and then minting that amount of stable coin. Oh my goodness gracious. And if we wanna burn a stable coin, we burn it and it gives us back the collateralization token. It's not emitting any events, which we would want it to do, but still, holy shit. So it looks like it doesn't keep track of anyone's balance. Balances, it doesn't really care how much the value of the collateral is. So this protocol could hypothetically be under collateralized. It's not really a stable coin either. So let's ask. Could you update this stable coin pegged to $1 using chain link price feeds? Now I know I said you don't have to know anything, but I kind of lied. Having some domain expertise is really helpful because I know that chain link price feeds is an oracle that's going to help me peg my stable coin to a dollar. And it gives me a whole lot of more code here. And it says, oh, you need to npm install at chain link slash contracts, which I can ask again, how would I install using four? Forge. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, which again, we just know we have to do this dash dash no commit. Then in our forge remappings, we're going to add this. And now we should be good to go. So let's just scroll back up. Let's just copy what it gave us and paste it in here. We'll try to compile again. Oh, we know we have that error that we just need to edit based off of its most recent output. Uh huh. Run a forge compile and bada bing, bada boom, we're in business. Simple stable coin an admin, collateral token, and a price feed based off the collateral token. Nice, we have a get collateral price where we call latest round data from the Chainlink documentation, which it seems to be very aware of. Calculate collateral amount, and we mint based off the collateral amount, and then we burn based off the collateral amount. Let's ask it to write us a test. 
please use Solidity. And since it's not familiar with Forge, once again, we can just copy paste this. Say below is the Forge documentation for writing tests in Forge. And now that it's read the documentation, it gives us this whole list of instructions on how to create our own test. And so we're gonna use our two main skills to implement this, which is click this copy code button and do exactly what it tells us to do. Paste. Make sure to replace price feed and collateral token address placeholders with the actual address of the Chainlink price feed and collateral token in the contract test you're using. Hmm, that sounds not like something I want to do. Can we use mock Chainlink price feeds instead of the actual addresses? And great, it gave us some code that we're going to copy paste, and then we're going to update our test file based off what it gave us. Now let's run Forge build just to see if everything compiles, but holy shit, it compiles. Now let's run the test suite that we have no idea what it does, but let's just ship it and we get an error. Invalid collateral token address. Can we use a mock ERC-20 as a collateral token instead of adding our own? And it says, sure can do. Give us this mock ERC-20 code, which we're gonna paste in. We're gonna copy paste the newly generated test code again. And now we'll run Forge test. Oh, and if we do forge test, we get this issue, which I know how to fix this, but let's just ask ChatGPT. And it says, cool, here's your new test function. Copy this, paste it in. And it seems like I still got an issue, so I'm unfortunately gonna have to flip the switch and turn my brain on here. So it looks like it's transferring the stable coin some money first and gonna double up transfer money. Let's just go ahead and delete that line. We'll leave that line. I'm just gonna approve everything. So we're just gonna do the max here. Now we're getting true amount exceeds balance. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here. We're going to do collateral token dot mint message.sender collateral amount. And I can see another issue where it's sending way too much. I'm assuming that's because the price is off and it sure is. Let's update the price here and bada boom. So I don't really know if this code is any good, but we have a test. We have a stable coin that doesn't keep track of anybody's deposits and stuff, but it's fine. It mints and burns as we expect. I'm going to say I'm pretty much done. I'm going to wrap up here and say, great. Can you write me a badass readme that will show others how to interact with the contract and then make me a simple SVG logo for the project? And thanks again. We're going to hit this copy button and we'll grab this SVG from before, we'll make a new file, logo.svg, paste that in, AI dollar sign, what a badass logo. Can you make me a license? All right, which we're gonna copy, paste that in here, your name or organization, Patrick Alpha C. Let's check out the readme and boom. Last thing left to do is to push it up to GitHub, which I'm gonna do right now. So is this stable coin any good? Not really. However, it did fairly quickly give me the basic tools that I need to make a stable coin that might be really dope. Now, when working on stuff like this, as I mentioned, be sure to use protocols like Stack Exchange Ethereum, Urana, and anything else to double check that ChatGPT actually knows what it's talking about. But now that we have our simple stable coin, Ave better run for the hills because any day now, ChatGPT is gonna make a competitor. And if you'd like, I'll leave a link in the description to this exogenous anchored coin, which I painstakingly coded by myself like a dummy, which has my implementation of what a die clone would look like in a minimalist format. Hope you all learned something. Coding has never been easier to get into, and we'll see you next time.